What's up guys, Merry Christmas and welcome to Supercars of London. 2016 has been an absolutely fantastic year for me documenting my journeys of seeing some of the world's most exotic and rarest supercars, both in motor shows and on the streets all over Europe and this time in the United States. So this video runs down from some of my favorite spots of 2016 and let me know in the comment box below on what was your favorite car that Supercars of London spotted and documented this year. So we kick things off with a Porsche 918 Spider or 918 Spider. Now this isn't any Porsche 918 Spider. We have ran from the bottom of Park Lane, Zach in a shirt and suit trousers to catch this 918. This car is finished in guards red. It comes equipped with the Visac pack and it has also gone as far to having brand new HRE wheels fitted to the car with tyre writing which in 2016 became a bit of a trend. Some people loved it, some people hated it, a little bit like Marmite. However, this car arrived in London very early on in 2016 and it took me around six months to find this car. I headed into London during the summer, I headed into London during the spring, trying to hunt down this car, obviously trying to hunt down many cars, but this one particular car eluded me for so long. However, We have ran from the bottom of Park Lane, Zach in a shirt and suit trousers to catch this 918. And luckily, it got stuck in a little bit of traffic and I was able to capture some pretty awesome footage of a guards red 918 Vice Sack Pack fitted with HRE wheels. Moving swiftly on to um, what, what should this make the top five? And in my eyes, yes, because it is a very, very special occasion, but I will use a lot more footage because at the time I was a little bit blasé about the whole scenario. However, the Holy Trinity parked next to each other for the first time that I had ever seen that wasn't on TV, that wasn't in a magazine, was at Goodwood for a charity day that I headed down with Seb Delaney from Southern Sky Motors. And there was a huge convoy, it was a fantastic morning, great turnout, and we arrived at Goodwood, the sun was shining, and for the first time in my eyes, and many other people's eyes, the Holy Trinity sat next to each other for the first time. I have to put the Holy Trinity at Goodwood for the Peter Saywell Charity Day in at number four. Okay, number three has got a, an amazing story behind it. So this occurred during my week-long visit during August to Seb Delaney in the south of France, more importantly, Monaco. When I arrived, we were vlogging pretty much the same thing for the first two days, but we wanted to make sure that our content was slightly different. And I came up with a game of alternate lucky dip car spotting. To vary both of our vlogs, I came up with the idea that we would do rock, paper, scissors at the beginning of the video. Whoever won would then choose whether they wanted to go first or second within this new lucky dip game. If they went first, the first supercar that was seen they claim and they can film that car for the entire evening but then the next car is claimed to the other person so it was a head-to-head -head, me versus Seb and on the first night we were let's say naive to the fact or I was naive to the fact of just how wrong this game could go we were waiting at the Fairmont corner hanging around just waiting for some supercars to turn up and then an all blacked out Lamborghini Hurricane Spider came round the corner, which was mine to claim. I've lost. 
I am gutted. I'm gonna have to. Oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, I literally can't film. I'm so happy. Try, try and guess what this is. Oh. 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 <laughs> yes! <laughs> Whoa! Seb had claimed a Zonda F Roadster, which are incredibly rare these days. Then, later on in the evening when we were going past the Grimaldi Forum, which is near Sass, which is a very popular hotspot in Monaco, it was Seb's go again. There was a Zonda F Roadster there. What was parked next to it? A bloody Koenigsegg 1-1. So not only did I think that I was fairly smug getting a Hurricane Spider to film all night to myself without Seb having any content of it, he not only got a Zonda F Roadster, full carbon edition, he also got a Koenigsegg 1.1. We swiftly move on to number two. And uh, to be honest, there's something special about this car. This is the Bugatti Chiron, not the one that we saw at the Geneva Motor Show in 2016 because that wouldn't be that special. We are talking about the first customer delivery road going Bugatti Chiron that we saw in Cannes on the same trip as number three. I was with Seb Delaney and I literally arrived at 10 o'clock in the morning down in the south of France, Nice Airport, checking my phone to see what was going on in the south of France. One of the main reasons for that trip was to take the car spotting out of London and go somewhere new where I knew that there would be an abundance of Arab supercars. Little did I know that waiting for Seb to come and pick me up from the airport, I texted him that I'd landed and he told me in a reply that he was 10 minutes away. He was actually just getting out of bed and leaving his house to come and collect me, which is why I had about a 30 minute wait outside the airport. But that didn't matter because I was checking Instagram and I freaked out when the Bugatti Chiron landed down at the promenade on the beachfront in Cannes. And I said to Seb, we are going to find this Bugatti Chiron. We found it. We were pestered by four bodyguards that were standing on each point of the car. And that car, not, we didn't see it driving, unfortunately, but to be seeing that car stationary, the Bugatti Chiron, it did come to London. Not that that's a touchy subject or anything like that, but I spent about two hours in London trying to film a video. Completely failed, completely flopped. The light we lost very, very quickly. I sat the video off, went home, Within half an hour, there was this picture of all of the supercars lined up. Oh, and it had been raining as well. So, however, finishing on a positive, I saw it first in Cannes, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> and now, we move on to number one of 2016, and that is none other than KHK's car collection. Every year, it seems to grow. And I've been filming these guys' cars, and I've had many conversations with them talking about his Pagani's on the Cinque Roadster when he was power sliding it around central London at the age of 19, or when he had his white and chrome Centenario, or, uh, or his matte white Koenigsegg Aguera R, or even going back further, his SLR 722 or his Porsche GT3 RS. Like, I have been filming his cars for many years, and I'm not sure whether he would recognize me in the street. If he is watching, and I know that he does watch uh, the odd occasional supercar video, then if you're watching, huge thumbs up to what you bought this year. Because not only was it the Holy Trinity, a satin white, factory painted white LaFerrari, a yellow P1, a lovely gray 918 with ostrich leather, his Rembrandt Bugatti Veyron Vitesse, his yellow Ferrari F12 TDF. He also bought a fleet of luxury cars, the best spec Bentley Bentayga I've ever seen, all blacked out. His Mercedes Maybach, his Maybach. What else did he bring? I'm kind of forgetting everything that he bought. However, the footage that is playing now is essentially his entire fleet that he bought to central London. And to be fair, he drove every single car whilst it was in London and it was absolutely phenomenal to see. A bit of a shame that his yellow P1 had been unwrapped. It did go through a stage of being black chrome tattoo that had been wrapped by Sticker City in Los Angeles. However, that didn't matter because a Volcano Yellow McLaren P1 is still incredibly cool. 
and lined up next to the entire fleet of cars that was brought to central London for a couple of months. I'm pretty sure they're still in the UK, just not in central London and on show at the moment. But to me, that was the pinnacle of 2016, just seeing those incredible and impressive cars parked up next to each other and being able to show a friend of mine, Ollie White, who is not actually too familiar with the car spotting scene in London, but a massive supercar fan, to me, showing Ollie what the London scene has to offer goes down as number one in the 2016 supercar spots on Supercars of London. Hopefully you have enjoyed this video. I've thoroughly enjoyed rattling through and reminiscing on some of the best memories of 2016 within the supercar world. I am going to be creating another video talking about the top best moments that I feel that I have had on YouTube that might not be so centered around supercars in or outside of London. However, as we've all grown together, Supercars of London has slowly become bigger than just supercars in London. As I mentioned, when I hit 500,000 subscribers on YouTube, which is still a mad, mad number, that I went to Barbados and swam with turtles. And you guys enjoyed the video, so there are plenty more adventures to be looking forward to in 2017 with and without supercars. So, with that being said, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't subscribed to Supercars of London already, because, like I've already just mentioned, adventures there are going to be a lot of. So thank you for watching, and I will see you soon. Cheers, guys.